UFC Abu Dhabi. Okay, now a lot of people are talking about Costa versus Chemaev for the UFC October pay-per-view, which we all know takes place in Abu Dhabi, right? So that got me thinking, what's the UFC going to do with this card? So today I've built a whole card with Costa versus Chemaev as the co-main event. I've got five main card fights and I've got five prelim fights and I think you guys are going to like it. So make sure you subscribe if you want more matchmaking videos and let's get straight into it. Okay, opening my main card in Abu Dhabi, right? I don't even remember what I did. Oh, yeah. A guy that really fought recently. Um, very, very exciting fight. One of the fights of the years in my one of the fights of the year in my opinion. Um, really, really happy to see this guy get a W. I want to see him move up the rankings quite quickly. He might fight before um, October again. Maybe he fights Nasruddin Imavov. But dude, I want to see Kelvin Gastelum on the main card of pay per view again. I want to see him fight Roman Delidze. Maybe both of these guys fight one more time. Maybe Delidze. Uh, doesn't fight until October again, but I think Gaslam will probably fight one more time before then. And if he beats, like, say, a Nasruddin Mavov or something like somebody like that, or an Andre Muniz, I think he should fight. I think after he beats an Andre Muniz or a Nasruddin Mavov, the opener of UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi should be Roman Delidze versus Kelvin Gaslam. This has Fight of the Night written all over it, dude. And the winner of this has got a lot of a lot of stake at middleweight, a lot of like you know title contention opportunity the winner of this fight especially if it's gastelum dude if gastelum wins this fight and he's on a three fight winning streak we're talking about you know gastelum versus cannoneer we're talking about gastelum versus i don't even know duplessis winner gets a title shot type fights you know what i'm saying so i think this is a really cool opening uh fight for the for the pay-per-view and yeah man i think this would be a really good scrap as well i think this would be a genuinely one of the fights of the night to be honest so moving on we need a bit of star power, right? We need a bit of, like, you know, names that people love or people love to hate. And I think a big fight that you can do in the lightweight division, not ranked, right? Because the UFC loves putting unranked fights on pay-per-views. i got to be a little realistic, right? I think this is a really cool fight that the UFC is going to look to do soon. I think they should capitalize on the beef and on the intrigue in it and the controversy. I think the second fight of UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi should be Paddy Pimlet versus Jared Gordon, the rematch. Um, settle the score. Imagine these guys on a press conference now after all the beef and all the trash talk and all the controversy. Imagine Dana trying to like stay neutral and be like, I don't know, man, I thought the kid won, you know. I think this would be a really cool fight to kind of add some hype to the card because, you know, if you've got Chemayev Costa, that's going to be a little bit of beef. But some of these other guys on the card, they're not necessarily going to sell it for you. I feel like it's still going to do well, but I think Paddy Pimler versus Jared Gordon uh, timeline wise makes sense for this card as well because Paddy Pimler's injured. He's not going to be back till like the end of the year. So I think this makes a lot of sense um, in Abu Dhabi in October. And this is a big fight, dude. I feel like, like I said, this is going to sell some pay-per-views, bro. People love to see uh, Paddy Pimlet lose. And I feel like Jared Gordon, there'd be nothing more satisfying than seeing Jared Gordon get to finally fucking beat him. Or if Paddy Pimlet finishes him, then the UFC can say, look, see, our boy is legit. Let's move him on to the rankings. So it's kind of win-win for everybody, dude. And I feel like this is a perfect fight for a pay-per-view to sell some Sell some tickets, you know. Sell some pay-per-views. Get some interest, you know. Get some views on the press conference, mate. Get some views on Embedded when they run into each other, you know. Shit like that. And fucking Paddy's like, What's up, lad? Jared, you know, I'll fucking beat you, lad. Don't be saying nothing to me, lad, because I'm going to fucking knock you out, lad. Straight up, lad. You know who the boy is. Anyways. Moving on. That was a pretty good impression. Come on, dude. Drop a like, dude. Come on. That was, come on, dude. I got you, bro. Got you. I got your ass, dude. That was a good impression, huh? Yeah, yeah, you better fucking like the video, bitch. Anyways, featured fight. I think we need some we need some fireworks, bro. I think we need a guy who recently got a big KO at UFC 287 and it hurt my soul to see it, but I it was a cool knockout. And he does deserve a big fight, and there is a perfect fight to be made here in the Bantamweight division. This makes sense for the location, for the timeline, for the rankings. This is the fight that you need to make at Bantamweight, and this belongs on pay-per-view. I want to see Peter Yarn versus Rob Font. I know Rob Font KO'd my boy Yarnes, dude. And yes, I was feeling like Jamie Pickett after that happened. I got to be honest, dude. I definitely reconsidered a lot of things. I felt, you know, Jan Blahovic would have had another rope in his collection if I had gone through with it, dude. You know what I'm saying, bro? But all jokes aside, this is a fire fucking matchup, dude. Like, come on, bro. This as like the featured fight on a pay-per-view in Abu Dhabi. Like, the crowd would be absolutely insane for Peter Yarn. This is a winnable matchup for him. And at the same time, if he gets fucking KO'd dead by Rob Font or he loses a decision, 
You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a banger. It's going to be a fire fight the entire time. I feel like this is such a pay-per-view worthy fight. And I can just see, I can just picture this being made for Abu Dhabi. Every year in Abu Dhabi, Peter Yan is there and he loses a controversial decision. So let's keep the trend going. Let's get him to lose a split decision to Rob Font. Okay, but now, nah, I think this is a really cool matchup. And I feel like it's very winnable for Yan. So I feel like a lot of people would be really, really excited to see this announced. And I think this belongs on UFC 280, uh, 294. Excuse me. So... That's my featured fight, all right? Co-main event, you already know what it is. We're going to do Costa versus Chemayev. Me, personally, I would love to see Chemayev fight for the belt, and the UFC does Costa versus Whitaker. Someone in my comments suggested that. Shout out to you, bro. I'm, I wish I had your comment right here on my screen, but I don't. I couldn't find it. Um, but yeah, someone in my comments told me they should do Chemayev versus Adesanya, and then Costa versus Whitaker, and winner fights winner, loser fight loser. And I think that is a great idea, but the UFC is not going to do that. Because they want money. They want Costa versus Chumayev right now. Um, which is probably a little bit more winnable for Chumayev than an Adesanya fight straight away. Uh, there's still hype that you can build up more hype for this fight if Chumayev wins. And yeah, dude. I feel like this is going to be a really good co-main event for a pay-per-view. I could see it being a five-round fight. Um, I don't see it going five rounds. But I think Chumayev versus Costa fits perfectly. Like I said, this is going to sell pay-per-views. You know, Peter Yan on the card versus Rob Font. That's, gonna, that's a banger. That's going to sell some pay-per-views. I think Paddy Pimblet, Jared Gordon beef as well will do really big numbers for this card. I feel like this press conference would be fucking awesome. Of like, Chemayev, Costa, Pimblet, Gordon, fucking, you know, who else on the card up there? And yeah, bro, this is the perfect co-main event. And in the main event, right, we've sold all our pay-per-views. Now we got to give them a reason to watch, right? we got to give them a main event to watch. These two guys aren't necessarily going to promote it. I do think this is a really intriguing matchup, though. A lot of people would be interested to see how this goes. Um... It's gonna be, it's gotta be fucking Makashev Dariush, bro. It's gotta be fucking Makashev Dariush. Dude, Dariush is gonna beat Oliveira, alright? And he's gonna get this fight in October in Abu Dhabi. It just, it's so perfect. It has to happen. It will happen, in my opinion. Um, and honestly, I could see Dariush winning this. I've been saying this for months. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trolling, bro. Like, dude, Dariush actually has the best. Darius actually has the best chance to beat Markashev in this division, in my opinion. He, dude, it's not even close, in my opinion. I, like, honestly, I feel like Darius is the worst matchup for Markashev and Oliver. He's going to beat Oliver. He's going to flatten him out and just just flatten out his jiu-jitsu and drop him with overhands. And with Markashev, I feel like it's a, a bit the same. I, f I can just see him dropping Markashev, stuffing takedowns, winning a close decision. So I feel like this, is real, this would be a really cool uh, headliner. On top of the money fights that we've got, and on top of the really good matchups, we've got like Delidze Gastelum, you know what I'm saying? Yarn versus Font. And we've got the money fights. We've got Paddy Pimbler, Jared Gordon talking shit. We've got Chemayev Costa talking shit. So I feel like this would be such a lit fucking pay per view, dude. I hate using that word, but this that's how I describe this shit. I feel like this would be such a fucking sick pay per view. Such a sick fight week. Such a sick embedded. And yeah, bro, that's my main card. So let me know what you think of the main card down below. Now I'm going to go to the prelims, bro. Yeah, you thought it was over. Nah, bro. We're going to the prelims, all right? And one fight I want to make in the flyweight division on these prelims, I want to see Muhammad Makaya versus Alex Perez. The man who should be injured in every fight versus the man who is injured in every fight. Um, it's time to give Makaya a fucking test, dude. I don't know why this guy's still fighting unranked fighters and not fighting Jake Hadley or fighting like Sumu Daji or fighting fucking Tyson Nam or Bruno Silva. Um... I'd say fuck it, bro. Let's do Alex Perez versus Mikhaev. Um, Give Perez heaps of time to get ready for this fight. Um, you know, maybe he gets injured. We can still keep the fight together if he has enough time to get prepared for October. Um, and Mikhaev, you know, he's got the knee injury, so he might not be back until October. And I can definitely see the UFC putting him on this card. So I think this makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, in terms of the ranking, the timeline-wise, and where these two guys are at in their career. Mikhaev needs a test. You know, and this is honestly not that bad of a matchup for Perez. I feel like he could actually, like, surprisingly win this fight. But I would pick Mikhaev, and I think this would be a pretty good scrap, though, especially on the prelims. So that's my first prelim I want to see. Moving on to the prelims, uh, my second prelim, I want to see Blagoy even. Well, I don't want to see it, but I do think this is a very likely fight to happen. Let me let me put it like that, because I have to be realistic, right? You know, fights I want to see. Do I really want to see these two, bl like lards of blubber like rolling around together not really but do i think the ufc would make a fight like this at, at, at an abu dhabi card yes 110 percent. yes i could see the ufc making this um 
and making me sit through this to get to the other good prelims, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So I think ranking-wise, this makes a lot of sense too. Both these guys are coming off some losses. Um, Blagoy Ivanov's more of a grappler, got a crazy chin too. And Romanov, probably a little bit more winnable for him. But, you know, if he if he fails the first takedown, he'll probably just tap out. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a probably a finish. So that'll be good about this matchup. And, you know, you, you want to get some big ranked names on these, um, these prelims for the pay-per-views, in my opinion, at least. I feel like the UFC is pretty good at doing that. So this is a perfect prelim fight, in my opinion. So that's my second prelim. We move on to the featured bout of the prelims. I want to get some excitement back in this shit. Let's get... Otman Azaitar versus Narulo Aliyev. What a weird fucking matchup, dude. That's what I love about this fight. When I made it, I was like, dude, you've got a KO artist who is on drugs and steroids versus Khabib, basically. And I know what you're saying. They already did that fight, UFC 229, McGregor versus Khabib. Listen, bro. It worked one time. Why not do it again, bro? You know? <laughs> Let's get Azaitar versus Aliyev because either Azaitar KOs this fucking guy and it's crazy. Or Aliyev just gets a big showcase performance in front of a very uh, generous crowd towards him, I would say. These two, I reckon, belong on a Abu Dhabi card. I feel like they, they would want to do that. The UFC would want these guys on that card. And, you know, perfect fight, high-level, unranked lightweights belong on the prelims. Um, you know, the UFC would probably put this on the fucking main card for some reason. But for me, I'm putting this on the prelim as a featured bout. I feel like this would be a sneakily pretty good fight, actually. So... This would be a pretty exciting and intriguing matchup, in my opinion. That's my featured fight, okay? Co-main event of the prelims. Do not click off the video. I swear to God, because you're going to miss one of the best prelims I've ever made, all right? Do not click off it, dude. You don't know how hard it is to be on the prelims. Okay, we got Casey O'Neill versus Andrea Lee. This makes perfect sense ranking-wise. I can see Casey O'Neill for some reason being put on this Abu Dhabi card because she's Scottish and Australian. Um, you know, Dana White just hears her accent, like, I don't fucking know, put her on Abu Dhabi, you know, and then Casey O'Neill, all fight week, you know, Guru, Mrs. Guru can just be on fight week being like, you don't know how hard it is to get to Abu Dhabi, I have to fly on the plane, so Casey O'Neill probably get a W, probably get a finish in this fight, and that's what the UFC wants, so let's put her as the co-main on the prelims, sorry boys, you gotta sit through fucking Casey O'Neill and Andrea Lee to get to the prelim headliner, the Giga Chad returns, Alexander Rockets versus fucking Krylov, dude. Come on, bro. I was going to put Gaslam Delidze, prelim headliner, but I think that's gonna, more likely to be an exciting fight. So I put that opening the main card, especially because everyone loves Gaslam right now, and they all saw that Curtis fight, so they all want to see uh, Gaslam's next fight. Whereas Rockets Krylov, that's 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 one that you, you see, you know, you're a hardcore, you see it on the prelims, you go, fuck, bro. I want to watch that dog. Like me personally, when I get these Abu Dhabi cards, they're on at like four in the morning. This is a fight I would wake up at like six in the morning to watch. Okay. This is a good fight, dude. So this is my prelim headliner. Let me know what you think of my Abu Dhabi card down below. We got Paddy Pimler, Jared Gordon. We got Kelvin Gaslam, Roman Delizze. We got Peter Jan, Rob Font. We got Chemayev Costa. We got Islam Makhachev versus Benil Dariush. We got Rakic Krylov on the prelims, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that's my Abu Dhabi card builder. Let me know what you think down below. What fights do you want to see on that card? And what do you think of these fights that I made? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below, boys. Thank you for watching. Drop a like. Subscribe as well. I'll see you in the next video. Because you know who the fucking boy is, lad. See you, boys.